from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh, I have the headlines that have moved my soul probably more than any others in recent days. This first one, anti-Semitism in the streets of Europe. It's not just in the Middle East down there, but it's in Europe also. Some 200,000 missiles aimed consistently at Israel. And then the third one, Hamas to Netanyahu, will rain hell on Israel. And uh, because of the seriousness of this program, Jack said, uh, you know, I think we're going to get right into it. We're going to eliminate some of the humor that we normally have in the beginning of the program. And uh, we are so concerned about the Middle East, aren't we? And everybody has something in mind that uh, is sort of in my mind. And I want to ask Jack this question before we get into the headlines. Jack, could everything that we're seeing right now point to the return of the Lord? Rexella, Jesus could come at any moment. We are the generation. I'm going to prove it in a moment. And what you're seeing right at this moment between Hamas and Israel is the beginning of what is coming soon. And it's called Armageddon. World War III. Stay tuned. Oh, my, Jack. That's so serious. But, you know, I'm grateful that we can, we're going to talk about that in a moment, too. Have peace in this troubled world. Oh, I'll we're going to be you. evacuated. The rapture. Amen. Come up hither. We're going to miss it. Amen. <laughs> we're the generation. Oh, I can say amen to that, I'll tell you. It's wonderful to know we have a blessed promise, don't we? But I, I'm going to ask Jack if he'll elaborate a little bit more so that we will know some more facts about everything coming to pass and we could be the generation to see the coming of the Lord. Rexella, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, learn a parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender and bringeth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all the signs of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, then you'll know it's near even at the door. A lot of people have said, oh, we've always had wars, rumors, wars, famines, pestilences. How can they be signs? Jesus didn't say they were signs. He said two things have to happen. And without these two things, all the signs are meaningless and no generation lived to see the two signs until your day. We're the generation that's going to go up when they say and hear the voice, come up hither. Revelation 401, and then we sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now let me prove that. In Matthew 24, Jesus said, no man will know the day and the hour. So we've got a lot of these guys who set dates and it fails. But we have the other crowd that says, ah, nobody can know it'll be a thousand years from now because no one knows the days and the hours. That's not what Jesus meant. Why? Nobody can know the day. Why? Because I'm in Michigan, and when it's Wednesday here, it's Tuesday in another part of the world, and Thursday in again another part. So there are three days at one time at all times. Then there are 24 time zones. So if he says it's going to be 12 o'clock when Jesus comes on that Thursday, there's 23 times that time zones disprove what he's saying. So nobody can know the day and the hour because you have three days at all times and you have 24 different hours time zones. Now, what did he mean then? He said you've got to see two major signs. Israel has to become a nation and they have to control Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, it didn't happen for 2,011 years for Israel to become a nation and 2,030 years for them controlling Jerusalem. 1948, they raised their flag, the six-pointed star of David. And in 1967, they controlled Jerusalem. Now, that's what he meant when he said in Matthew 24, 32, learn a parable of the fig tree. When you see all the signs of these four gospel chapters, that's when I'm coming. Now, it started in 63 B.C. Pontius, the general of Rome, took the Jews away from their land, and they were out of it through many empires controlling them 
for 2011 years. And then they got back in 1948 and said, we raised the six-pointed Star of David. We're a nation. And then in 1967, they took Jerusalem. So you could not believe any of the signs to be signs pointing to his return because there had to be an Israelite. Repeat it. It's a good teacher. And they had to control Jerusalem. We have lived to see it. We are the generation. And give me one more moment for a verse. Hosea 6, 2. The Jews said, a day is like a thousand years. Psalm 90, verse 4. And the Christians said, yes, we believe the same thing in 2 Peter 3, 8. A day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. The world will go on for 6,000 years. And then Armageddon comes. We're at the 6,000 mark. Now, listen to me. Hosea 6, 2. The greatest prophecy there is. After two days. A day is like a thousand years. After 2,000 years, he didn't say at 2,000 years, he said after. 2,011 years, 1948, they became a nation. And then after another 19 years, they controlled Jerusalem. The signs are here. And as you're going to see through the rest of the program, everything that's going on with Hamas and Israel and everything in all the nations right now is leading to the Battle of Armageddon because the Battle of Armageddon, Ezekiel 38 and 39, is fought in the latter years and the latter days. There was no Israel to invade until your lifetime. And it's a war called Armageddon is of the latter years and latter days. It's about to happen. Oh, Jack. You know, all the headlines I'm going to give right now back everything up that you just said, but these are modern-day headlines. Now, a comprehensive result of survey absolutely shocked me. It was appalling. New survey shows the extent of worldwide, worldwide anti-Semitism, and then anti-Semitism in the streets of Europe. Now, friends, that's not the Middle East. That's Europe. That's Swastika. Belgium. That's absolutely Europe. An ugly surge in anti-Semitism. And the, here we see Berlin. I'm in praise for the annihilation of Jews. Now, Israelis and Gazans can live in peace, but not under Hamas rule. What world leaders have said about Israel's right to defend herself. Now, let me just say this. Our president, Canadian Prime Minister Harper, also the German Chancellor Merkel, and the UK Prime Minister David Cameron, and the Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott, they all said that Israel has a right to defend herself. How wonderful. I thank the Lord so much that our president entered in on that and said they have the right to defend themselves. Now, I was shocked, but I want to ask Jack about this survey. Is this a major sign that Jesus is coming right away, Jack? It's not only the major sign, it's the only sign that tells us we're about to move ahead into the Battle of Armageddon. And Satan has always hated the Jew. That's what it's all about. First Chronicles 21.1, Satan stood up against Israel. Why? Because God loved the Jew. Yahweh, God says, she's my wife. And that's Jeremiah 3.14. And I'm going to protect her. Listen very carefully. Jesus again said in John 16.2, the time will come when whosoever kills you, Jews, will think he's doing God a service. Well, that's what they're saying now in Islam. You get 72 virgins if you kill a Jew. What else? Jeremiah 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is Israel, 2 Kings 17, 34. Jesus said again in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as never was since the beginning of the world. To this time nor ever shall be again and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake the Jews those days will be shortened God the Father Yahweh is on Israel's side who's the elect Isaiah 42 1 45 4 and chapter 65 verses 9 and 22 Israel is mine elect Israel is mine elect. And you're not going to get rid of the Jew because my God in this book says I'll give Israel an everlasting name. 
Isaiah 56, 5. Oh, dear. That's very definite in the Bible. There's no doubt about it. God wrote it, and I believe it from the bottom of my heart. Well, Benjamin Netanyahu gave a defining statement concerning Israel as a state. Will you look at this, please, Prime Minister, to push basic law that will define Israel as Jewish state. Jordan's foreign minister rejects recognizing Israel as Jewish state. Well, there's a conflict with Jordan. Are you kidding? Going on, Arab League states total rejection of Jewish state recognition. Okay, al Aqsa Sheikh, Jerusalem will be Muslim forever. Oh. That's their aim. And uh, I would say that Benjamin Yahoo wants to really be firm about the status of Israel. And I'm going to ask Jack. I think he made it pretty clear, but I'd like for him to elaborate a little bit more. Who owns Israel? Who does it belong to, Jack? This is my book on the millennium. In the back, I have 120 Bible verses where God says, the land belongs to my people, Israel. And 930 times he says, when they establish the capital, Jerusalem, it belongs to the Jews, my people. The apple of mine eye, Zechariah 2 8. And I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus comes back, he's not going to sit on a throne under the Islamic flag. He's going to sit on David's throne, Luke 1 32 and 33. This is the word of God. Gabriel appears to Mary the day that Jesus was born. He says, your son shall be great, Mary. And he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. And he shall rule over the house of Israel. Not Islam. Israel forever and forever. That's where Christ is going to rule. And you know what happens at that day? Philippians 2, 10 and 11. Oh, this is exciting. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And God said he's going to set him on that throne. In Hebrews 1.8, the Father says to his Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever and forever. It's going to be an eternal kingdom. And that's why Revelation 11:15 says, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. And he, Jesus, shall reign forever and forever and forever because the world's never going to end. And that's the Catholic Mass is ending every week, world without end. Amen, amen. And that's Isaiah 45, 18 and Ephesians 3, 21. Jackie, thank you so much for all of the Bible that you give us every single week. He backs everything up that he has to say with the Bible and how grateful I am. Well, do you remember when they talked, uh, they came together and they talked about a two-state solution? between, of course, Israel and the Palestinians. But that quickly just fell apart. It was dismissed. I couldn't believe it. But uh, two-state solution is dead. Time for armed conflict. And here you see Hamas rockets reach Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And then going on, the ugly tide washing across Europe. Oh, my, oh, my. You see the flag there? Of course. That's the Israeli flag. And then 2,000 Palestinians killed in Syria. I want to stop here a moment. Do you realize where those 2,000 Palestinians were killed? It was in Syria. Now, the media doesn't focus on the fact that more of the Palestinians were killed in Syria than over in Israel and the conflict there. Jack, why is this? I don't understand. Uh, because we got a crooked media, and they want to hurt Israel all they can. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Most of you don't know this. On the maps of the Islamic nations, Israel is not a nation. It's not on their maps. They don't recognize them. And yet they want to be recognized as a state. They want it, and Israel can't have it. That's what this nonsense is all about. And I'm going to tell you something. God says that there's going to be a terrible time coming. This is only a beginning with these rockets coming from Hamas and the dome shutting them down. 
Why? Because 2 Timothy 3, 1 says, this know also the last day perilous, dangerous time shall come. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, nations shall be in distress with perplexity and mass confusion. But it's only the beginning. We are now seeing the start of the great war that's coming. It's the war of the latter years and latter days, Ezekiel 38, 8 and 16. And in a few moments from now, you're going to see 18 times that Israel is the battleground. Now, the war of the latter years and latter days headed by Russia could not happen until your generation. There was no Israel to invade for 2011 years. Remember what I said in the beginning? And it starts over dividing Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2. And there was no Jerusalem to divide, controlled by the Jews until 1967. We're the generation. Oh, Jack, I'll tell you, we have a blessed hope, and we're going to talk about the blessed hope in just a few moments, because when Jesus comes back, how wonderful he's going to stop all this, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, how good it is to know. We'll talk about how you can be ready for the second coming of the Lord, but before that, whoa, this wonderful new offer, the Jesus of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Take a look, please, at the commercial. Doctors Jack and Rex Olivenepi have just released their most startling and informative video study ever. It's entitled, The Jesus of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. You'll be astonished to discover the similarities between Judaism and Christianity, an alarmed and shocked discovering chapter and verses from the Quran about the prophet Jesus called Isa. Presently, many Christian ministers and Bible translators have become traitors, defectors, betrayers of Jesus, and enemies of the cross of Christ. What blasphemous and erroneous lies are ministers promoting and practicing in 2014? This video study names the doctrines being taught, which the Holy Spirit calls doctrines of demons. In this video, you'll learn what today's false prophets teach and what God commands you to do when you hear it. Who are these alleged Christian leaders and what blasphemies are they promoting? The Jesus of Judaism, Christianity and Islam will give you the answers. Oh, friends, I just want you to know that this probably is the most important video we've ever made for you. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. Make the call right away. We really want you to know all about Jesus. He's so misunderstood today, but we try to explain who he really is on this video. And, Jack, you want to say a word? I'm not trying to boast, folks, but I have board members and Bible Scholars said, we've never heard anything to equal this. As a result, we've called our agents in, and we're going to make this thing the biggest thing in the history of our ministry. We have never advertised anything outside of Canada and America. Now we're going full force for the next four months to get this into the hands of every type of person on earth in Africa and China and South America. Pray with us and get it. You'll see how important it is. Oh, yes. So make the order right away. There's 800 number and there is the address. Hey, is the Jesus of the Quran the same as the Jesus of the Bible? We explain that. It's so misunderstood on this level. Who is the Jesus and the Messiah of Islam? What is jihad really all about? So there's the 800 number and there's the address. Please make the call right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Now, you know, friends, I made a statement in the beginning of the program that some 200,000 missiles are aimed consistently, 200,000, at Israel. And what would you do if a rocket could find its way into your home at any moment if you lived in Israel? How would you feel if you went to bed at night and knew your family had maybe 15 seconds to find shelter? Well, this is a reality for those living in Israel. And take a look. Mahmoud Abbas slams Hamas over rocket attacks on Israel. Israeli news attacks in response to rockets. Well, don't you think they should defend themselves? Going on, Israel warns Hamas about the continued rocket fire. Hamas. Islamic Jihad vow to continue terror no matter what, and the Hamas official will expel or kill all Zionists. 
and Hamas trains 13,000 teens. Now, friends, those were high school students. They were training them to emulate suicide martyrs. Hamas TV, Muslims to exterminate the Jews. Hamas to Netanyahu will rain hell on Israel. Hamas minister, first Israel, oh my word, look at the next statement. First Israel, then the world. You know, that sort of sounds like Armageddon, doesn't it? And I'm going to put Jack on the spot right now. Could this, what's happening in Israel and in the Middle East right now, could that be the beginning leading right to Armageddon? There's no doubt about it. Every nation that's involved in this war is now in place. First of all, Russia. A peace contract has just been made. And lo and behold, after 42 months, the leader of Russia says in Ezekiel 39, verse 6, I will go against them at rest that are at peace. And so he moves under the title of God, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all cities in Raj, and that's Russia in Greek and Russia in English, in that chapter, Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2. And it's the war of the latter years and the latter days. It could only be fought when there was an Israel and they were in control of Jerusalem. I repeat it throughout this message because we're the first generation to see it. 1948, 1967, okay? It's the worst war in history as the Oriental nations come. The second wave. And that's Revelation 16, 12. The kings of the sun rising. British revised version of the Bible. And as they come, oh man, it's bloodshed everywhere. And that's Revelation 9, 14, 18. Loose the four angels, demonic spirits, in the great river Euphrates where our troops have been. That's Iraq. What? To destroy a third part of mankind. How? It says, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone. Beloved, I hate to say it, but that's nuclear warfare. We're not going to escape it. And that's often in the Bible. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30. The prophet sees Russia being pushed back, and he says, uh, there was blood, fire, pillars of smoke in verse 30. Zephaniah 1, 18, the whole land shall be devoured by fire. Malachi 4, 1, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Revelation 8, 7, the third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. It's here. That's atomic warfare. And who is the victim? As the Muslim nations who hate Israel join with them, and that's Daniel 1140, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, and then Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7. Get this. And why? Psalm 83, 4. The Muslim world crying out, let us cast them off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. Let's kill every Jew. Let's get their names off the map. But it isn't going to work. You, Hamas said you're going to rain hell on Israel. Well, like hell you did. And I'm using that just like I mean it. You're going to be losing at this time like the Russia, China, the Muslim world, all lost. Why? Because God is there to protect his beloved people. Now, there's no doubt about where this war is going to be fought and who is the hated enemy. It's Israel, 18 times in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. No argument with that. It's Israel. And it's about to happen as they're already beginning to struggle with this nation and throw in their rockets, 200,000 are pointed at Israel right now, and soon it's going to break loose, and all hell will break loose in this old world. But the Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6, comes back and puts a stop to those who are destroying the world and destroying one another, Muslim against Muslim and against Jew and the Christians who are converted during that hour. Puts a stop to it? Yes, Revelation 11, verse 18. And then he sets up his glorious kingdom. And from then on, they shall learn war no more. Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus, and get us out of this mess. We're looking for the rapture. We're the generation that's going to miss all of this soon. You know, Jack, I don't think I've ever seen you more passionate. 
I've never heard him more passionate, have you? It's because of everything that's happening according to the Bible, and we see it every day. But, you know, friends, I just want to say, if you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have come because he loves you. He died for you. You can be redeemed, and you can be saved, and you can know him as your Savior right now. Will you open your heart to him? Be ready for his coming. I trust that you'll pray this beautiful prayer of acceptance with Jack right now. Will you? Precious Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, shedding your blood for every human being that ever came into this world. We trust in you. We trust in your holy blood to cleanse us. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I don't want to be here for that hour. I want to be ready for your call. Come up hither. And so now I ask you to come into my heart, Jesus, and save me today. I accept your sacrifice for the way of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I trust that you pray that prayer with Jack. How wonderful it is is just to say, Lord, come into my heart. He hears every word as your Savior. Did you open your heart and did you pray that prayer? Write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this wonderful little book of first steps in a new direction. You want to go in a new direction in this life? He'll walk with you. So write to me. I'll send you this wonderful little book. And now here's our announcement to tell you how you can receive the brand new offer, the Jesus of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend, to order the Jesus of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of 2495 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of 2495 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. And now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. There's the 800 number. There's the address. Please write or call. We, we want you to have this in your home because it's very informative. All the things you need to know about the real Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. So please write or call right away, and we'll inform you as best we can on this wonderful new video. And let me just leave you with this wonderful thought. Open your Bible prayerfully. And then read it carefully and, whoa, obey it joyfully. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, then you'll know it's near even at the door. A lot of people have said, oh, we've always had wars, rumors, wars, famines, pestilences. How can they be signs? Jesus didn't say they were signs. He said two things have to happen. And without these two things, all the signs are meaningless. And no generation lived to see the two signs until your day. We're the generation that's going to go up when they say and hear the voice, come up hither. Revelation 401, and then we sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now, let me prove that. From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents, the truth in news and commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Oh, I have the headlines that have moved my soul probably more than any others in recent days. This first one, anti-Semitism in the streets of Europe. 
It's not just in the Middle East down there, but it's in Europe also. Some 200,000 missiles aimed consistently at Israel. And then the third one, Hamas to Netanyahu, will rain hell on Israel. And uh, because of the seriousness of this program, Jack said, uh, you know, I think we're going to get right into it. We're going to eliminate some of the humor that we normally have in the beginning of the program. And uh, we are so concerned about the Middle East, aren't we? And everybody has something in mind that uh, is sort of in my mind. And I want to ask Jack this question before we get into the headlines. Jack, could everything that we're seeing right now point to the return of the Lord? Rexella, Jesus could come at any moment. We are the generation. I'm going to prove it in a moment. And what you're seeing right at this moment between Hamas and Israel is the beginning of what is coming soon. And it's called Armageddon World War III. Stay tuned. Oh, my, Jack. That's so serious. But, you know, I'm grateful that we can. We're going to talk about that in a moment, too. Have peace in this troubled world. Oh, I'll we're going to be you. evacuated. The rapture. Amen. Come up hither. We're going to miss it. Amen. <laughs> we're the generation. Oh, I can say amen to that, I'll tell you. It's wonderful to know we have a blessed promise, don't we? But I, I'm going to ask Jack if you'll elaborate a little bit more so that we will know some more facts about everything coming to pass and we could be the generation to see the coming of the Lord. Rexella, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, Learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and bringeth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all the signs of Matthew 24.